This article was originally published on January 13, 2003. Many prominent neoconservatives are calling on America not only to conquer Iraq and perhaps more Muslim nations after that, but also to rebuild Iraqi society in order to jumpstart the democratization of the Middle East. Yet, Americans know so little about the Middle East that few of us are even aware of one of the building blocks of Arab Muslim cultures. Cousin marriage. Not surprisingly, we are almost utterly innocent of how much the high degree of inbreeding in Iraq could interfere with our nation-building ambitions. In Iraq, as in much of the region, nearly half of all married couples are first or second cousins. A 1986 study of 4,500 married hospital patients and staff in Baghdad found that 46% were wed to a first or second cousin, while a smaller 1989 survey found 53% were consanguineously married. The most prominent example of an Iraqi first cousin marriage is that of Saddam Hussein and his first wife Sajida. By fostering intense family loyalties and strong nepotistic urges, inbreeding makes the development of civil society more difficult. Many Americans have heard by now that Iraq is composed of three ethnic groups the Kurds of the north, the Sunnis of the center, and the Shiites of the south. Clearly, these ethnic rivalries would complicate the task of reforming Iraq. But that is just a top-down summary of Iraq's ethnic makeup. Each of those three ethnic groups is divisible into smaller and smaller tribes, clans, and inbred extended families each with its own alliances, rivals, and feuds. And the engine at the bottom of these bedeviling social divisions is the oft-ignored institution of cousin marriage. The fractiousness and tribalism of Middle Eastern countries have frequently been remarked. In 1931, King Faisal of Iraq described his subjects as devoid of any patriotic idea, connected by no common tie, giving ear to evil, prone to anarchy, and perpetually ready to rise against any government whatever. The clannishness, corruption, and coups frequently observed in countries such as Iraq appear to be in tied to the higher rates of inbreeding. Muslim countries are usually known for warm, devoted extended family relationships, but also for weak patriotism. In the U.S., where individualism is so strong, many assume that family values and civic virtues such as sacrificing for the good of society always go together. But, in Islamic countries, family loyalty is often at war with national loyalty. Civic virtues, military effectiveness, and economic performance all suffer. Commentator Randall Parker wrote, Consanguinity cousin marriage is the biggest underappreciated factor in Western analyses of Middle Eastern politics. Most Western political theorists seem blind to the importance of pre-ideological kinship-based political bonds, in large part because those bonds are not derived from abstract Western ideological models of how societies and political systems should be organized. Extended families that are incredibly tightly bound are really the enemy of civil society because the alliances of family override any consideration of fairness to people in the larger society. Yet, this obvious fact is missing from 99% of the discussions about what is wrong with the Middle East. How can we transform Iraq into a modern liberal democracy if every government worker sees a government job as a route to helping out his clan at the expense of other clans? Addendum. Studies have revealed that consanguinity cousin marriage is an important risk factor for schizophrenia. In addition, the studies confirm that the higher familial risks provide strong genetic epidemiological evidence for the overall heritable effects in the etiology of schizophrenia. Mental health disorders and the terrorist. A research note probing selection effects and disorder prevalence the descriptive statistics highlight inherent differences in the types of mental disorders suffered by terrorists particularly lone actors as compared to a general population. There are only three disorders that have a substantially higher prevalence in the lone actor population, see figure 2, the most noteworthy being schizophrenia. Schizophrenia has long been accepted as having a prevalence of 1%, upper end, in general populations, and has a contentious link to violent behavior. The MAOA2R allele that has a link to extreme violence has an occurrence of about 15.6% in some Arab populations, as opposed to 0.1% to 0.5% in Europeans. See association study between the dopamine-related candidate gene polymorphisms and ADHD among Saudi Arabia population via PCR technique.